Welcome back to Plot Twist, my new Excel chart series where we transform boring data into impressive data visualizations. In today's episode, we'll learn how to level up a scatter plot by creating a quadrant scatter plot. Let's take a look. A quadrant scatter plot is a scatter plot that's divided into four equal quadrants so that it's easier to find items with similar traits. For example, here we have a list of companies along with their total revenue and total expenses, and want to visualize this data using a quadrant scatter plot so that we can easily see which companies have high revenue, high expenses, high revenue, low expenses, low revenue, and high expenses, and lastly, low revenue, low expenses. To create a quadrant scatter plot, all you need is your data and two additional data series that will represent the horizontal and vertical lines in the scatter plot, but we'll get into how to set these up later. So let's go ahead and insert a scatter plot by selecting the total revenue and expenses, navigating to the insert tab, opening the scatter plot dropdown, and selecting scatter plot. Let's clean this chart up a little bit by deleting the chart title and grid lines by selecting them in the chart and pressing the delete key. I also like to remove the chart border to give it an embedded look in the worksheet by navigating to the format tab, opening the shape outline dropdown and selecting no outline. Next, we need to add access titles and data labels so that it's clear which companies fall into which category in our chart. To add access titles, press the chart elements button and check access titles. Now we just need to set these titles equal to our data labels. So I'm going to select the X axis title, hit the equal sign and select total revenue. Repeat this for the y-axis by selecting the y-axis title, pressing the equal sign, and this time selecting total expenses. To add the companies as data labels, press the chart elements button again, and this time hit the arrow icon next to data labels and select more options. We want the labels to be the values in column B, so we need to check value from cells and then select the companies in column B. Hit OK, and as you can see, each data point is now labeled with its respective company, but it also includes the expense value. We don't want to include expenses in our label, so I'm going to uncheck Y value under label options to remove the expenses. Okay, now that our chart is formatted, we need to add the quadrant lines. First, add the outside borders by right-clicking the plot area, selecting format plot area, and setting the border to solid line in the border section. I'm also going to thicken this border a little bit to make it stand out more, and we've successfully added our outside border. Next, we need to add the vertical and horizontal lines across our chart by adding new data series. This is where two additional data tables come into play. These values are going to vary based on your data, but for the horizontal line, you'll enter the minimum and maximum value of the X axis as the X values and the halfway point of the Y axis for both Y values. For the vertical line, you'll enter the halfway point of the X axis as the X values and the minimum and maximum value of the y-axis as the y-values. Once you have these values ready to go, add them to the chart by selecting the chart, navigating to the Chart Design tab, choosing Select Data, and clicking the Add button in the Legend Entries window. First, let's add the horizontal line by selecting the Series X Values box and entering the X values, then selecting the Series Y value box and entering the Y values. Press OK to add the values to the chart, and repeat this for the vertical line by pressing the add button again, entering the X values in the X series box, entering the Y values in the Y series box, and pressing OK. As you can see, we've added the horizontal and vertical line points, but Excel automatically adjusted both axes based on the new data points. We need to revert these values back to the original so that the horizontal and vertical line points fall on the border of our scatter plot. To do this, right-click the Y-axis, select Format Axis, and set the maximum bound to 300,000. Repeat this for the X-axis by selecting it in the chart and setting the maximum value back to 600,000. Now that our points fall on the border of our scatter plot, all we need to do is add the lines and our quadrant scatter plot is complete. To add the lines, right-click any data point on the border, select Format Data Series, Open the Fill in Line menu and select Solid Line under the Line menu. Adjust the width of this line to match the width that you made your outside border. And lastly, remove the markers by selecting Marker, opening the Marker Options menu, and selecting None. Repeat this for the other line by selecting one of its data points, opening the Line menu, selecting Solid Line, 
adjusting the width, and removing the data points by selecting marker, marker options, and then choosing none. One final touch is to delete the data labels on the end of each line by selecting them in the chart and pressing the delete key. Our quadrant scatter plot is officially complete, and now we can easily see which companies have similar revenue and expense values based on which quadrant they fall in within our chart. Quadrant scatter plots will have you looking like a data visualization ninja in no time. You're literally slicing your chart into four. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel and turn on notifications so you don't miss the next episode of Plot Twist.